1964 started out as a disastrous year for 41-year-old Yvonne DiCarlo. Her film career had come to a halt, and after nearly 30 years of work, she was deeply in debt. But when her old studio, Universal, called with an offer to star in a TV series about a family of monsters living in the suburbs, Yvonne had mixed feelings. At first, uh, she was embarrassed by the thought of doing it, but her agents and her bank book told her, go audition for this, you need the part, you need the money, it might lead to something. The Munsters debuted on September 24th, 1964, with Yvonne playing Lily Munster, a century-old vampire and matriarch of a ghoulish household. Also starring in the series were Fred Gwynn as Lily's Frankenstein-style husband, Al Lewis as Grandpa, her vampire father, Beverly Owen as the blonde, blue-eyed family misfit, and Butch Patrick as her werewolf son. Oh, you be a good boy. See? Mommy sold the ear back on your wolf wolf. Fred and I heard that they had hired Yvonne DiCarlo. Being from New York, we barged in, what do you mean? She can't, blah, blah, blah. And we were wrong. <laughs> We were wrong, Fred and I, because she was marvelous in the show. The series was a monster hit, and when Pat Priest stepped into the role of Marilyn, the show's popularity only continued to grow. Yvonne brought a unique quality to the character of Lily, making her the perfect TV mom. I think of Yvonne as being kind of a, a vampire version of, of Donna Reed. Eddie. You should spend Saturday afternoons at home doing something more wholesome, like digging up bones in the backyard with Spot. <laughs> all of her gestures, you know, with her hands, all the wonderful little unique things that she brought to that part, those things were natural to Yvonne. They're not to anyone else. <laughs> tut, tut, Mr. Brustoff. <laughs> The star loved indulging in the broad comedy and lively banter that made the relationship between Herman and Lily Munster sparkle. Herman, what are you doing here? Oh, Lily. Well, you see, I... If that's my husband, get rid of him. <laughs> Lily, you may not believe this, but I'm Secret Agent 702. Herman, you may not believe this but I'm Sonny Liston. <laughs> Come on, Marilyn. To transform herself into the ashen-faced vampire, Yvonne shed her glamorous image and endured three hours in the makeup chair every morning before putting in a 12-hour workday. You know, that was pretty hard to shine through all that makeup that she wore, not only did she have to have her, her face and, and her neck and out toward her shoulders made up? But her arms had to be made up because they were bare. You know, you'd get headaches just from the weight of all that hair. It was not easy. But it was worth it for Yvonne, who was enjoying the attention of a whole new generation of fans. This you've got to see. The Munsters at Marineland. Munster mania was everywhere. There were Munster lunch boxes, hand puppets, and board games, personal appearances by the entire cast, and a customized Jaguar Mark 10 for Yvonne to drive around town. But just as the actress's career was returning to stable ground, the novelty of the Munsters began to wear thin. During the show's second season, the ratings began to sag. In 1966, Yvonne agreed to co-star in the color feature film, Munster Go Home, which was intended to renew interest in the television show. Herman Munster inherits a fortune and a castle full of homicidal relatives. Allow me to present my wife, Lily. Uh, pleased to meet you. And Grandpa. Oh, quiet, Father. I'm trying to think. It's frightfully funny. <laughs> but by the time Munster Go Home was released, the series was already canceled, and the actress was looking for her next paycheck. For Yvonne, the pressure to support her family was intense. I believe that Yvonne was like Atlas holding up the world in terms of financial support of other people. 
holding up an entire family as she did was an amazing thing. I wish somebody could have come along and, and shaken her and said, don't support everyone and don't let anybody make you feel guilty about this or that. By now, Yvonne's relationship with Bob had become intolerable and she needed an escape from the home that had become a battleground. Over the next few years, the actress kept busy by appearing in a series of low budget films and traveling on the dinner theater and nightclub circuit. By cashing in on her movie star persona and still marketable name, Yvonne successfully managed to avoid the typecasting that plagued her Munster co-stars, Fred Gwynn and Al Lewis. In 1971, she made her Broadway debut as Carlotta, a down-on-her-luck former showgirl in the Stephen Sondheim musical Follies. Good times and fun times, I've seen them all in my dear. I'm still here. Plush velvet sometimes, sometimes just pretzels and beer. But I'm here. I run the gamut. I'm Still Here became her anthem. And her singing of that song and being in Follies, where she got great reviews, became one of her great show business successes. Follies ran for a staggering 522 performances. At 48, Yvonne DeCarla would prove to one and all that she was indeed still here and still a star.